and uh, come on to your mat. And let's start today, Damon, in uh, cross-legged. Cross-leg sit for just uh, the first minute or so. I want to ground. So come into a cross-leg. I'm going to join you. What I want you to do is just take a moment, whether you're uh, comfortably on the floor, maybe your knees are a little bit up, that's okay. Uh, but I just want you to uh, close your eyes, bring your attention into your sits bones. I want you to feel that connection that you have with your floor, with the mat underneath your butt. And sit tall, shoulders up and back, crown of your head, lift it up. And begin to breathe. Nice, slow, and deep inhales. And by deep, I mean take those to your low belly. So deep in your body. Let your belly fill up. Let your chest fill up. Nice and slow. I want you to bring your attention into the physicalness of your body. So those sensations that uh, are happening right now, perhaps um, what you feel on the outer edges of your feet or your ankles where they touch the mat. Maybe it's your thighs against your mat, your sits bones. I want you to feel the expansion of your chest and your belly as you breathe in and feel the muscles as you breathe out. Feel that physicalness. with your eyes still closed, I want you to bring your hands to your heart. Let's start class. One ohm. Deep breath in. Come on to your back. Supta Baddha Konasana. So again, a grounding kind of start to class. Soles of your feet together, edges, pinky toe edges to the mat. I want you to be aware of the points of contact again. So this is a, an attention to physicalness today in class. As we go through these basics, I want you to be very mindful of where your body makes its connection with your mat, and at the same time, be aware of what your body is uh, kind of reporting back to you. You know, uh, is it heavy? Is it light? Does it hurt? Does it feel great? You know, those kinds of things. So it's these, these little check-ins that I want you to do through your body. So relax. Now I want you to bring a bit of pressure to the soles of your feet. And let your low back settle into the floor. So with the pressure in the feet, flatten your low back against your mat. And then I want you to relax your feet, relax your legs, and feel that natural curve develop again underneath your low back. Again, press the soles of your feet together. And then relax. Allow that natural curve to return to your low back. One more time. Flatten low back, soles of the feet, press together. Ground down through your low back. Keep it flat to the mat and bring your knees together. Bring your knees to your chest. Keeping your low back flat, I want you to hug in your knees. And maybe like Damon's doing right now, a little bit of rocking side to side. More to uh, settle in your low back than anything else. It's not really to massage the low back necessarily. 
It's more of a getting grounded, getting the edges, getting hip bone to hip bone settled into your mat. And now I want you to take your left foot straight out ahead of you toward the back end of your mat. Now you can let your leg rest on the mat, keep your right knee hugged in. If you want to create a little extra work, a little extra effort, keep your low back grounded, low belly engaged, and then uh, bring your heel, your left heel slightly off the floor like Damon's doing. So he's allowing his left leg to hover, keeping that knee hugged in. Now before he switches, I want him to bring the left knee up. So bring it back to your chest, Damon, and then send your right leg out. So a nice tight hug with the left knee. Right leg hover and ground your low back. And I don't know if you can see it at home, but he's very active in his right and left foot. He's got both feet flexed back toward his face, pushing into both heels. Now bring your right knee up to your chest. One more time, send your left leg straight out, let it hover off the floor. Keep your feet engaged. And one more switch. Right leg out, left knee in. And then bring your right knee to your chest, both knees to your chest now. Take a moment, breathe. Now do give yourself a little rock side to side, more as a, a massage than, than just a grounding. Kind of relax that low belly area because we're going to continue this with the left leg straight up now. Right knee hugged in, left leg up. Create as much length from heel to hip along your left leg. Left leg, heel to hip, low back. Keep that natural curve flat to the floor. So try to keep your low back from arcing up. Pull your left knee in, send your right leg up. Switch it again, left up, right knee in. And one more switch, right leg up, left knee in. Both knees to chest. And then both legs straight out ahead of you, flat to the floor. Now I want you to examine low back on yourself. So uh, take note of your own self. Low back, maybe the curve, that natural curve is there. Flatten it down. I want you to bring your right knee in toward your chest and then send it up to the ceiling. So keep your left leg flat on the floor this time. No lift. Just push through the left heel though. Flex your left toes back toward your face. And I want you to grab under and behind your right thigh. So if, and this is the, the place where if you had a strap at home and you've grabbed it, fine. Loop your right foot, pull into that, kick into your right heel. But if you don't have a strap, it's okay. Use your hands for the purpose of that, okay? As straight through your right heel as possible. Kick up and into that. So you're working that hamstring, and then release and switch. Right leg down, left knee, and left leg up. Grab in behind your left thigh. Active right foot, keep that active too. So toes are flexed toward you, and left foot strong through your heel, as straight as possible. Maybe lower that a teeny bit, Damon a little lowered, straighten into that leg, and then try to lift it a little higher toward your face. And he's saying, nope, nope, <laughs> that's gonna be it. And that's good, and that's what you wanna do. You know, you wanna find the point where your knee wants to bend, and you stop right there. Kind of work that edge where 
your leg wants to bend, but you're, you know, you're right at that edge. All right. And both knees to chest. Hug them in. Rock side to side, forward and back. And then I want you to come up into a sit. Seated pose. And maybe move yourself a little bit toward the back edge of your mat, Damon. Legs straight out ahead. Bend your knees a bit. You're going to come into a seated staff pose. So your palms are going to be to the floor. Palms to the floor. And begin by creating a bit of bend in your knees. Shoulders up and back. You want to be able to keep shoulder integration happening. So for some of you, you may find that fingertips pointed forward is more productive sometimes if you rotate the wrist back and point the fingers behind you. That might be more uh, helpful for the shoulder integration. Basically, you're getting, though, your shoulder blades up toward your ears. You're rolling them back and then bringing them in toward the center spine. All right. And with Damon, and for a lot of you, you may find that just on your knuckles, you know, might be a good place to be with this. All right. So with a nice tall spine, I want you to press out through your heels. Work to straighten your legs. Damon and I both have tight hamstrings, the beginning of almost any class, and sometimes even toward the end of class, we still have tight hamstrings. But that's what we work for, right? We work to work on these things. Now relax, a little more bend in the knees. Don't worry about the shoulder integration at this point, allow that to relax. And we're going to do one more time, one more set. Integrate your shoulders, roll them up, roll them back, pull your shoulder blades in toward the center. Press down, nice tall lift through your body. Kick out through your heels, flex your toes back toward you. Keep breathing and keep pushing into the heels. Hmm? Hmm. You've got you to gotta modify. Dame, what Damon's telling me, and you may, may or may not be able to hear it at home, is that this isn't the greatest thing for his low back. And it's good that he's letting me know that, because now I'm going to say relax. <laughs> Bend your knees. Allow the back to relax. Good. So any kind of modification for that, number one would be keep one leg straight at a time. You could keep one knee bent, one leg active. Alternate that. That's going to take a lot of pressure off the low back. Uh, also, as far as the uh, degree of flatness in the low back, allow a little extra curve, and that would take some of the pressure off your low back. So, all right. So, I want you to come on then to tabletop. Been working on stretching out hamstrings and calves. At the same time, we've been working a lot on low back and low belly core integration with this. So to continue that, send your right leg back, Damon. So heel to the back, both palms flat. Low belly, pull it in and up. Lift your right leg a teeny bit higher. There you go. Kick through your right heel, keep it strong, keep it active. And release. Left leg, take it back. Kick into the heel. And release. Right leg back. Left arm forward. Extend as far forward as you can through the fingertips and through your right heel. Keep pulling in and up on your belly. Release. Send your left leg back, pause there, and then send your right arm forward. Release. 
Right leg back, left hand forward. Release, switch. Release. Now I want you to take a moment, create a couple of cat cows through a few cycles of breath. So with your inhale, you let your belly relax toward the floor for cow. With your exhales, arc up into cat. Inhale to cow. Exhale to cat. Another cow. And another cat. Then come back to a neutral spine, flat back. I want you to send your right leg back again, straight back, left hand forward. Pause here, get as much extension as you can, low belly in and up toward your spine, and then I want you to take your left arm a bit out to the left, your right leg. Now a little, a little slower than that, a little slower. Bring it back to front to back, nice and long. One more time to the side, slow it down, and Pause, pause, and release. Take it down. So you're going to do two, all right? Take it slow, though. I want you to experience what's happening here. It's this physicalness of the body. You get the extension on the other side, then you open outwards. You bring it back to front to back, and then your second time, side to side, right arm to the right, left leg left. Bring it back front to back. Pause there. Experience that and then release. Palm to the floor, knee to the floor. Cat cows, inhale to cow, exhale to cat. Inhale to cow, and exhale to cat. Bring it back to a neutral spine, and then bring your right foot forward. You're gonna come into, um, you're gonna set up for a couple of things. You're gonna set up for a lunge, so right foot forward and pause here. Everybody at home and Damon as well, we're gonna be on the knees a few more minutes. If you want a pad and you haven't done it yet, grab a blanket, grab a towel. You're welcome. You could have grabbed that at any time, you know that. Yeah, all right. So right knee over right ankle. And I want you to keep your left hip over your left knee I'm going to do a couple of uh, core stabilizations before we take it on into a lunge. So before we go to lunge, like Damon's doing here, I want you to walk your right foot to the left, arms out side to side, pause there. So you can't maybe see it from this angle. Thank you, Damon. So you've lined up your right foot with your left knee. You've got them in a line, low belly, engaged, arms out to the sides. Big letter T. Then I want you to slowly rotate to the right. Pause there, pause there. Keep your arms straight. So if I don't throw you off, Damon, I apologize if I do. Keep your arms there. So a nice straight line. If I could attach a two by four to the back of Damon's arms, it'd be in one long straight line. Hmm? Mm, yes, bring it back to front. <laughs> and then walk your right foot to the right. Uh, you can do that if you'd like. All right, switch feet, left foot forward, right foot back. Check your angles, right hip over right knee, left knee over left ankle. Walk your left foot, line it up with your right knee, pause there, and you're gonna make a turn to the left. So you'll be turning in toward that leg, arms nice and straight, from fingertip to shoulder, shoulder to other fingertip, one long nice line. Keep holding it here, keep breathing. Bring it back to front and release. Walk your left foot back to the left. And now we're gonna come into those lunges. So 
right foot forward. Begin to walk your right foot a little further forward. Right knee a little further forward. Gradually taking your left hip toward the top of your mat. Go slow with this. Don't rush into anything too fast, too low, too quickly. The focus for you needs to be in the front of the left hip. So left hip flexors, left quads. Pause and allow your body to adjust to this. Allow it to stretch. Now you can keep your right knee and thigh directly out ahead of you. You know, nice straight line ahead, or you can allow that right knee to angle out toward the right a bit. So more of an open hip. Slowly bring yourself back and out. Switch feet, left foot forward. Take your lunge slowly. Little by little, left foot forward. And little by little, right hip out and forward, stretching through your right hip flexors, your right, right quads. And then as all that starts to stretch, if you'd like to let your left knee come out a bit to the left, opening that hip, you can. So you're taking it a bit more into a lizard pose, but without coming into a full-on lizard. You know, you're just now beginning to warm up the hips, beginning to warm up your, your quads and your hip flexors. So nothing too quick, nothing too fast. You know, it's a basics class, and basics doesn't necessarily mean easy, but basic means basic. It means what's fundamental to a practice. Uh, fundamental to yoga practice is maintaining that connection between your mind and your body. Uh, you want to be able to uh, pay attention. You want to be aware of what your body is telling you without uh, a lot of chit-chat about it. You know, if the knee hurts, if the low back hurts, you recognize it, you make adjustments, uh, you're in that moment with the pose, feeling what's happening, that's basic to yoga. You know, you have to have that ongoing connection, that ongoing dialogue between physicalness and the mental, uh, the mind part of it. All right, ease back out of this. Take your knees wide, big toes to touch. So both knees to the floor, both knees to the blanket. Knees wide, big toes to touch. Sink back into a child's pose. Stretch long. Send your tailbone back toward your feet. Fingertips and arms out ahead of you. Gradually lengthen into this. So gradually walk your fingertips a little further forward and a little further forward. And then take your hands off the mat to the left. So you're creating a side stretch along the right side of your body. And then create that the other direction. So walk your hands back and walk them off the mat to the right. Stretch along your left side. Bring it back to center. Press the palms of your hands into the mat, fingers wide, spread them apart. Curl your toes under, and I want you to come on up into a downward facing dog. You could slide the blanket if you've got your knees padded. You could slide that out of the way for now. I want you to walk your dog. 
So cycle your knees. Again, attention into the physicalness of what's happening. If, you're, if your ankles are tight, recognize that. You know, as you press to get a heel to the floor, maybe it's a hamstring that's, that's keeping the heel from going down. Maybe it's a calf. Maybe you feel it more in the ankle. You know? And it's having that, that awareness of what's going on there. Walk it a little bit more, a little bit more. And then a nice slow walk to the top of your mat. Hang in ragdoll. So feet parallel, about hip width apart, knees bent. Let your neck relax. Let the weight of your head, your neck, your shoulders, and your arms pull you down and toward the floor. So there's no real effort. You're allowing this to happen. Let gravity work. Nice slow roll with an inhale. Take it up to a mountain pose. Keep your feet hip width apart. Low belly, pull it in as you reach up and fold with the exhale. Back down into a forward fold. Relax your neck as you do. Roll up to mountain, big breath in. And exhale, forward fold. And back up to mountain. And forward fold. Create a halfway lift. Flat back, forward fold. Another halfway lift. Focus on straighter legs, forward fold. That's what you're going to work on. Third one, halfway lift, forward fold. Halfway lift, straighten those legs and fold. One more time. Halfway lift and fold. Breathe in, roll up to mountain, and forward fold. Halfway lift, and fold. Mountain with the inhale, take it up, press down, lift up, forward fold, breathe it out. Halfway lift, and fold, and pause in your forward fold. Take a moment here and breathe. Going to take your left foot back. You're going to come into a crescent lunge. So the uh, options here are a full-on crescent lunge. You can keep the knee high, or you could take the knee to the floor. Tailbone down and under. Front of the pelvis rises up as your tailbone sinks. Shoulders up and back. Take your fingertips back down to the floor and bring your left foot forward. Rise up, crescent lunge. So it's a switch there. Right foot came back, left foot stayed forward. Again, think about alignments here. Heel over toes on your back foot, knee over ankle on your front leg, shoulders up and back, Tailbone tucked slightly, which helps bring the front of your pelvis up. Fingertips back to the floor. Switch feet again. Left foot back, right foot forward. Pause and rise. One more breath in and out. Fingertips back to the floor. One last switch. Left foot comes forward. Right foot goes back. Heel over toes. Strong grounded legs. You can see it. You can see it. I want you all to feel it. So tighten it up a bit. Skin to muscle to bone. Firm legs, firm muscles. Another breath in, 
hand out, fingertips to the floor. Step to the top of the mat, halfway lift, forward fold. Breathe into mountain pose, roll up and forward fold. Halfway lift and fold. One more mountain, all the way up. Big breath in, reach up, reach back, and hands to heart. Nice. All right. I want you to ground. So hands alongside, arms down alongside. I want you to keep um, the left foot, toes fanned out, settled into your mat. Nice grounding in the left side. Strong left leg. Low belly, pull it in and up, and bring your right knee hip height. Pause there. Active right foot, you want your toes, your entire foot, you want it flexed toward your right shin. Keep active, keep your quads firm. Strong left leg, ground it, send it down into the mat. Press it down. Good, Damon says he can't press it anymore, that's good. You want, you want 100%. Hold it there. Hold it there. Release. Ground your right foot. Strong right leg. Left knee hip height. Damon says he can't press his right leg, or a minute ago, his left leg, any harder. So what I want you to do with this right leg is relax it slightly. I want you to feel some relaxation in the right hip, maybe the right knee, just a little bit. Just enough so that when you press into it and down into the floor, you feel that lift. You feel the lift in your right hip. And when you relax it just slightly, you feel that dip. You recognize the difference. Your body, your mind, your brain begins to recognize that difference in the pose. Press again, get tall, that's it. And release, left foot to the floor, nice. So that's what you wanna get. You wanna get, you wanna get that immediate feedback and you wanna know that your body is, is, uh, is in touch with your brain. All right, left foot grounded, right knee hip height. And then straighten your right leg. Send it out ahead. Strong through both legs. Lift your right leg a little and a little higher. Pause there. Now when you lower your leg, I want you to let your right foot hover. Take it down almost alongside your left foot. Right foot down. Give it a little bit of space under the right foot. Hold it there. You're almost grounded with the right foot, but not quite. And release, take it down. Other side. Ground the right foot, left knee hip height. Pause. And now left leg straight. We're gonna lift it twice, so lift it a little higher. One more time, lift a little higher, hold it there. Keep breathing, keep strong in the legs. Begin to lower it, let it hover as it gets almost alongside your right foot. Your left, le uh, left foot is not touching the floor yet, but almost, almost. And release, foot to the floor, nice. All right, kind of shake that out, yes? Both feet parallel, hip width. <coughs> Want you to come into a bit of a chair pose, not too low, not too low, okay? Not too low. Damon's been uh, dealing with a kind of wonky left knee, so I don't want too much pressure in your knees, okay? 
So modify where you need to. So let's focus on the left side first. Let's get it out of the way. What I want you to do with the right side is bring the toes up. You're going to let the foot kind of dangle. Right knee's not too high, but your left leg is in a bit of a chair leg. There's a little bit of bend to the left knee. There's some bend in the right knee, and your right foot just kind of dangles there. You're going to hold that work in your left leg. It's in the quads. It's in your shins, your calves, your ankle, your left foot. Allow that work to happen. Settle your right foot to the floor. Nice. Stand. Last one on the other side. A little bit of chair leg. Oh, I'm in his drishti. <laughs> I have given his uh, pose difficulty level. I've just raised that like several. I'll get out of your drishti. I'll get out of your way. You're welcome. So your left leg is bent. Your right leg is bent. Your left foot is kind of dangling there. I want a decent amount of relaxation in your left leg so that you can feel all the work that's happening in your right leg. Keep breathing and just be with this. and release it, left foot to the floor. Nice work. All right, top of your mat, feet hip width. Now, if you have blocks at home, grab both blocks. And if you do not have blocks at home, um, just go with it, yeah. Yeah, don't grab them like Damon said. But we're gonna come into uh, one set of pyramid on both sides. We're coming back to hamstrings and calves. A uh, comfortable step back. Damon has long legs, so his step is gonna be a little further apart than some of us, all right? Give yourself some room side to side, left to right, a little bit of space left to right between your feet, and then a comfortable step forward and back, all right? Right foot leads. Identify your hip crease. Identify that point where your thigh bones hit your pelvis and fold at that point. Take it forward. Chest out and ahead of you. A little bit of pressure down into both feet. If your hamstring and your calves uh, are relaxing, if they feel like they're stretching, you feel like you're getting that, that extra, then continue to bring the fold forward. Before you rise, I want you to create a little bit of push down into your right leg. So like you're trying to press your right foot into the floor, push it, and rise back up. So use that leg to push. All right, left foot, switch them out. Left foot forward, right foot back. Hip crease, where your thigh bone hits the pelvis. Fold forward, let your chest lead out ahead. Keep reaching it out, 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 out. Bring that fold. Create that pressure through your left leg. Push to rise and step to the top. Breathe into mountain, hands overhead. Forward fold. I want you to walk your feet back. Bring yourself onto your belly. Settle in. Going to create a couple of sets of locust. Going to do it a couple of different ways. So I want you to reach toward your feet, fingertips back 
alongside your hips. And then begin to create lift. So it's gonna be feet, legs, thighs, <laughs> arms, chest, mindful of your neck. A little bit of looseness, neutrality in the neck. I want you to take your arms out to a T and then forward into superhero arms. Take them slow though, take them slower. I always like to say it's like you're swimming through molasses, okay? Take them back to a T, then back toward your feet and release. Take it down, give it a little wiggle. Hips, low back. Second set. Reach for your feet. Create your lift. Slow motion, arms out to a T. Slow, 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 slow. Bring them forward, superhero, nice and slow. Back to a T. And toward your feet. Pause. Take them back out to a T, last set. Nice and slow, superhero. Out to a T, back toward your feet, and release. Take it down, good. Hips a wiggle. Quad stretches on your right side. Reach back for your right foot or right ankle. Try to let your right thigh relax. So the idea is to get your heel toward your butt. Allow the quads to relax. The underside, the front of your thigh, the underside that's touching your mat. Try to let that relax from hip to knee. If the compression is too much in the knee joint, back off of it. And if you ever have trouble getting the foot, you know, sometimes your shoulders may be more constricted. You can't quite get that angle. Uh, loop it with a strap and use that to pull your foot up and forward. Release your right side, do your left. And again, if compression is a little much, don't do it too tight. How's that, Damon? Is it okay? Release the left side. Take your arms, uh, palms up alongside, like you're gonna do a push-up. Keep your elbows in close to your body, arms bent. Create just a bit of press up. You're gonna come into a little cobra. So chest is up and off the floor. Just enough, I like to say that where your breastbone ends and that soft part starts. You want most of that soft, uh, soft area on the floor. The rest of the ribs are up. Keep that pressure up. Toes, if you'd like to create a little extra work. Hmm? Yeah, that's what I said, right? Okay. And then toes up. And release. Wiggle the hips. Second cobra, press, get a bit of lift, however you'd like to come into that. Feet up, knees up. You can let the palms hover off the mat. You can create whatever degree of difficulty you want in this pose. The key is to allow your mid, low, back, to kind of spread the effort out, spread the work out in this lift, strengthening your back. Begin to bring it down with control. Once you're down, relax it, wiggle it out. Nice work. All right, roll onto your back. Knees bent, feet to the floor. We're gonna do one set, maybe two sets of bridge. So feet fat, uh, flat to the floor. You want to walk your heels back till your fingertips almost touch your heels. 
So knees kind of over ankles. They don't have to touch your butt. Press down just enough, down and forward through your feet. Get a little bit of lift in the hip, maybe an inch or two off the floor. Pause here. And then take it a little bit higher. Keep pressing down and forward through your feet to get the lift. Take your hips a little higher. And then full on, create your press, hips toward the ceiling. Keep your knees relatively close together. Like uh, a lot of times we say if you were holding a yoga block between the knees, uh, sometimes a fist width between the knees. No. There they are. Yeah, Damon said, are my knees? And I'm like, no, now they are. Looking pretty good. And then take it down slowly. Knees side to side. Good job. And we are going to do one more set. So reground. Feet about hip width. Knees in close, but not touching. Press down and forward through your feet. Get the lift in the hips. Take it up slowly, but keep bringing it on up. You got to press down to get the lift. The lift happens when you get your legs involved. Press them down, press them forward. Slowly bring it down, vertebra by vertebra, until your tailbone touches, knees side to side, and then hug your knees into your chest. And give it a little rock side to side. Take your heels to the ceiling, pull your toes toward your face. Short core today because we did a lot of core in the beginning with the stabilization. Just want to bring a bit more in. Can't have too much core. <laughs> All right, kick into the heels, toes toward your face. And I want you to reach for your toes. If you're able to grab your toes, don't grab them. Reach past them. If you're able to grab, reach past. I want you to create that, uh, that curve up and in toward it. Big letter C, shoulders off the floor. As you pull your belly in, maybe you get your tailbone lifted just a bit. And you create that nice arc underneath your back. Keep reaching, keep breathing, keep breathing, keep reaching. Shoulders to the floor, knees to your chest. Good job. A little side to side. All right. Yogi's choice on hips. I like to give the choice. Um, you can uh, rock forward and back. You can come into a half pigeon, or you could uh, lie on your back and come into an eye of the needle. You could come into a reclined half pigeon. You could come into a full pigeon. A lot of choices. What are you going to do, Damon? Full pigeon? Full pigeon. So he's going to do a seated full pigeon. Some people call it double pigeon. You're basically going to take right ankle across, or left ankle across right knee. If it doesn't comfortably cross the knee, don't force anything. All right? Do not force it. You would bring, in this case, your left foot, bring it to the inside, slightly to the inside of your knee on your calf. That's a good angle. So full on, foot is past the knee. Modification, bring it in so that it's not quite as extreme. Key is to keep both feet flexed. You're going to have that dorsiflex where the toes are toward the shin. And you've got uh, one shin 
and calf stacked on top of the other. I like what Damon's doing. He's got uh, a little bit of external rotation going on, gripping his uh, upper thighs and kind of rolling them out and down toward the floor. Breathe and let that relax. Create a couple of twists in it if you'd like. And as his hips get a little more accustomed to the pose, he was able to take his left foot a little further across the right knee. So it's those little adjustments that can be made during the pose as your body begins to accommodate what's happening in the pose. Release that side and switch. Now, modification for this is not only just tucking that foot in, you could also create a modification with uh, basically just simple cross legs. Cross legs just like that begin to work to get the hips open in that fashion. Okay, it's not, uh, yeah, how Damon also stuck that block between the crisscross where the calves crisscross. Move your arms back just a second so they can see. So you've got the block, got the crisscross in the calves, that helps support the knees so your knees aren't getting extra torque while your hips are beginning to open. Okay. Yeah. So again, you could take it full on, foot past the knee, or you could tuck it in just a bit to the inside of the knee. Okay, created some twists. On the other side, do it on this side. External rotation of the thighs, you grip them, you rotate those muscles out and around. And release. That side. I want you to take the soles of your feet together and you could uh, kind of reposition on the mat if you'd like. Cobbler's pose. Just bring your heels in toward uh, your groin. Sit tall, relatively flat low back. Try to keep it, uh, try to keep your low back from rounding too much. At least right at first. Want the block? Okay. There you go. Damon's creating a little extra leverage by tucking some blocks under his elbows. It helps him push down just a bit on the hips. And release. Come onto your back, feet to the front. And then bend your knees. Feet flat to the floor. Let your knees touch. Take your feet to the outer edges of your mat. And then let your knees fall to the right. You could tuck your right foot on top of your left knee. Open your arms out. Look toward your left hand. Spinal twist. <laughs> Relax into it as you breathe. that side. Create your spinal twist to the other side. Knees to the left. 
Left foot tucked on top of the right knee. And you want to look to your right. And release that side. Stretch out for Shavasana. Feet relaxed and wide. Let your toes drop out to the sides. Palms to the ceiling. In these last couple minutes for Shavasana, with your eyes closed and with your attention on your breath, I want you to feel the rise and fall of your belly. So as you lie back for Shavasana, just relax into your mat. Allow your, uh, allow your body to almost feel not necessarily heavy, but there's that, uh, that solidness as it connects and relaxes into your mat. Give up any tension that you might have. Bring your awareness into your feet. Allow your toes and your feet to relax. Your calves to relax. Your thighs to relax. Let your hips relax. Allow your belly, your chest, your back, your shoulders to relax. Relax down through your arms, through your elbows, into your wrists and your hands. Your fingers, let them relax. Let your neck your throat, your face, and your ears, and the top of your head. Allow all of that to relax. With every breath, allow your body to relax just a bit more. Begin to bring some movement now back to your body. So your fingers and your toes, let those move, feel that movement, and let the movement move through your body. Ankles, wrists, knees and hips, your neck. Let those movements get a little bit bigger. Roll to a side. and come up to a seat. Nice work. Basics. The most basic thing in yoga is connecting what's happening physically in your body to what you're aware of, to keep your mind on it as, as you practice. So basics. Let's close class with one ohm. Hands to heart, take a deep breath. Uh, With love. Namaste.